Hey, this is Justin from BreakingTheCRE.com, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about real estate investment trusts, or REITs. So if you're considering taking a job at a REIT, or you're just looking to invest in REIT stock, make sure to stick around for this video. Now on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial modeling. So if you're looking to land a job in the real estate investment business, or you're looking to do your first real estate investment deal, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. So what is a REIT exactly? Well, the REIT or Real Estate Investment Trust was created by US Congress in 1960 as a legal entity in order to make investments in income producing real estate more accessible to the public. Now, in many aspects, a REIT is going to have very similar characteristics to any other real estate investment firm or private equity firm that you may see. But in this video, what we're gonna do is break down how a REIT is actually different from any other real estate private equity company. So in general, the biggest distinction between a REIT and another real estate investment firm is that a REIT is going to be governed by several unique specific guidelines imposed by the IRS in order to qualify as a REIT. Now there are many requirements for a company to qualify as a REIT, but some of the biggest requirements require the company to have a minimum of 100 shareholders after its first year of existence, have no more than 50% of its shares held by five or fewer individuals during the last half of the taxable year. The company must be a corporation, a trust, or an association, the company must be managed by one or more trustees or directors. And perhaps the biggest regulation here is that the company must distribute 90% of the REIT's annual taxable income as shareholder dividends. Now there are really three main types of REITs out there. There are equity REITs, there are mortgage REITs, and there are hybrid REITs. So an equity REIT is what you would expect from a regular real estate investment firm. These REITs are going to own and operate real estate just as any other real estate investment company would. Now a mortgage REIT is a lender lending directly to real estate owners and operators or purchasing loans or mortgage backed securities. So these are the REITs on the debt side of the equation that are going to be the lenders to real estate owners and operators. Now a hybrid REIT is exactly what it sounds like. That's a mixture of the equity REIT and the mortgage REIT model. And these REITs will earn revenue both through their revenue generated from income producing real estate and also from the interest associated with the debt that they've issued on real estate deals. REITs can also be publicly traded, public but not traded, or private REITs as well. So at the end of the day, should you invest in a REIT if you're looking to make a real estate investment that's more hands-off and more liquid than a traditional real estate investment might be? Well, what I wanted to do is break down some of the biggest pros and cons of REIT investing so you can decide if REIT investing is for you or not. So first, as far as pros are concerned, what I just mentioned is very true for REITs, and that is that REITs allow investors to get exposure to real estate investments with the unique situation that they're able to invest with liquidity. So unlike an apartment building that you may buy on your own or in a partnership, you can buy REIT stock in an apartment REIT and if you decide six months or 12 months or 18 months later that you want to get out of the investment, you can generally easily sell that REIT stock. So if you own a real estate property outright or in a partnership, it's either going to take you several months to actually go through the sale process, or you may not even have control of when you actually sell the deal if you're investing in a syndication or partnership. Now, the second big pro of REIT investing is that REITs are generally focused on creating dividends and income for their investors. Now, when many people get into real estate in the first place, income is one of their first goals and main goals of venturing into real estate investments. So there are many REITs out there that focus specifically on creating distributions for investors so they can have a reliable income source from their investment within one or multiple different REITs. Now, the third big pro of REIT investing, which isn't really talked about all that much, is that REITs generally have a little bit of a lower risk than investing in private real estate. So while many private real estate investments are leveraged between 65 and 75% of the overall value of the deal, according to NAREIT data in the second quarter of 2019, the average 
debt to market assets for all equity REITs was just 32.5%. So what that means is that there's much more of a cushion in case values decline before the REIT starts to lose assets back to the lender versus the 60, 70, 80% loan to value ratio for many private real estate investments that are much more prone to risk of default in case the operating income of the property decreases. Also, as far as risk is concerned, REITs also allow you to diversify your investment in real estate across different states, cities, and product types, unlike what you'd be able to do with a private real estate investment. So again, if you're planning on investing in an apartment building, even if you're investing in a syndication, it's likely that there are minimums of 25 or $50,000 in a single investment and you have exposure directly to that city, state, and product type. But with a REIT, you can invest small amounts of money in several different REIT companies in several different parts of the real estate business, which can be helpful in case certain product types are hit hard by the economy or certain locations are hit hard by the economy as well. Now, investing in REITs can be a great opportunity, but there are also some big cons to be aware of before getting into the REIT game. Now, number one is taxes. And what I mean by that is that REITs are not taxed at the trust level, but most REIT dividends are taxed at ordinary income tax rates. So while an investment in private real estate or in a syndication might result in cash flow and income to the investor, but no taxable burden due to depreciation expense shielding any sort of taxable income, REIT dividends will generally be taxed at ordinary income tax rates, which can often be a very big tax burden, especially for high income earners. Now, number two is that REITs generally have high management fees and administrative costs. So obviously when you're investing in a REIT stock, you're investing in the company itself, meaning that you're going to be paying for executive management salaries, you're going to be paying for administrative costs to make sure that the REIT is compliant and qualifying as a REIT every single year, and any sort of back-end costs that are associated with the actual operation and management of that company. Now in a syndication, you're still going to be paying fees, but you're really only paying fees at the deal level. And if you invest in real estate privately on your own, obviously you get to skip all of those fees in the process. Now con number three is a relatively big one, and that is that REIT prices and REIT stocks specifically are going to fluctuate with the greater equities market. Now sometimes, even if the net asset value of the REIT that you're investing with hasn't changed significantly, you may see big swings in REIT valuation simply because the stock market is experiencing a major high or a major low. This is unlike a private real estate investment where even if you see major dips and swings in the S&P 500 or any sort of general stock market index, you're not necessarily going to see a major change in valuation of your real estate day after day. So with all of that said, REITs can be a great way to get into real estate and add real estate to your portfolio without having to have all of the management headache of doing a deal yourself. You'll have additional liquidity and in many cases, you'll have consistent dividend yields that can provide consistent cash flow quarter after quarter. So for some examples of what REITs might look like and what you can take a look at after watching this video, take a look at REITs like Avalon Bay, Equity Residential, Simon Property Group, Prologis, Realty Income, and Public Storage. These are all great examples of publicly traded REITs that are going to offer different exposure to different geographical locations and also different product types within real estate as well. Now, if you like this video and want to see more content like this, please let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and sharing this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.